How's it going everybody? This is going to be an update in the Duncan v. Becerra or Duncan v. Bonta case, also known as the California Magazine Band case. So let's talk about this. But real quick before we jump into this video, if you think that magazines that hold more than 10 rounds are just simply magazines and should not be called large capacity magazines, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe. I also want to give a shout out to one of the main supporters of the channel, that is USCCA. Through your membership, you get training, education, and self-defense liability protection. So if you carry a firearm, I highly recommend you look into USCCA, and I'll put a link to them down in the details section. So like I said in the intro, I have an update for you guys on the Duncan v. Becerra slash Duncan v. Bonta case, which deals with a challenge to California's uh, ban on so-called large capacity magazines, or simply magazines that hold more than 10 rounds. This is a case that has made its way all the way up to an en banc panel review in the Ninth Circuit. Uh, this is a case that was originally before Judge Benitez or St. Benitez in the Southern District of California. He found that California's Penal Code 32310, which bans the uh, importation, buying, selling, transportation, manufacturing, etc., of magazines that hold more than 10 rounds to be unconstitutional, struck that down put a temporary stay on his own judgment for about seven days, which led to Freedom Week and millions of magazines being purchased in the state of California and now in the lawful possession of residents in California. Well, the state of California didn't like that and they appealed the decision up to the Ninth Circuit. It went before a three judge panel in the Ninth Circuit and that three judge panel also agreed with Judge Benitez and found that California's law, which bans magazines that hold more than 10 rounds, to also be unconstitutional. So you have the district court and a three-judge panel both finding that California's ban was unconstitutional. Well, they still didn't like that, so they sought an en banc panel review. That is a review of 11 randomly selected judges. And the oral arguments for that en banc panel review of the decision is set for June 22nd, so here really soon. Well, we finally have the makeup of those 11 judges that will be hearing the Duncan v. Becerra case on Bonk. So here is the makeup of that 11 judge panel. First, you have uh, the chief judge, Sidney Thomas, who was put in place by Clinton. Then you have Susan Graber put in place by Clinton. And then you have Richard Paez put in place by Clinton. Uh, Marsha Burzon put in place by Clinton. Uh, Sandra Ikuda put in place by Bush. Mary Merguia put in place by Obama. Paul J. Waterford put in place by Obama, Andrew Hurwitz put in place by Obama, Ryan Nelson put in place by Trump, Patrick Bumate put in place by Trump, and then Lawrence Van Dyke put in place by Trump. So if you weren't following that, the makeup of this court is going to be a 7-4 lean in favor of Democratic nominated judges. So it is looking like we do not have a favorable makeup in the en banc panel review. And if you followed the recent decisions it, like we saw in Young, um, and also kind of the general um, chaos that is going on right now with especially people on the left being very upset with Judge Benitez's recent ruling in Miller v. Bonta. Um, my expectation would be that the en banc panel would not rule in favor of the Constitution, would not rule in favor of our Second Amendment rights, and actually find that California's ban on magazines that hold more than 10 rounds to be constitutional. Now, of course, by no means does this mean that this case is over. There still needs to be oral arguments in the Ninth Circuit. Of course, June 22nd is when that's going to be. I'm going to be watching that. I'm sure a lot of you guys are going to watch that, and I will give you my takeaways on that. But just looking up the makeup, it, it being a 7-4 lean and by individuals put in place by Democratic presidents, I would expect that um, this is probably not going to go our way and our best chance of actually getting rid of California's magazine ban for good would be a Supreme Court review of California's penal code. I know some people are talking about how maybe the Ninth Circuit wouldn't want to rule this to be unconstitutional because they wouldn't want the Supreme Court to take up a case uh, to challenge California's magazine ban or maybe even other issues like the ban on so-called assault weapons. I don't foresee that. I think the Ninth Circuit is going to do what the Ninth Circuit does. They're going to find that this is indeed constitutional, uphold what the state of California does, and then it's really going to be up to the Supreme Court whether or not they take the case or not. Uh, the Supreme Court has recently taken up another Second Amendment case in the court let case which deals with the new york uh, city um, carry permit restrictions and they're going to be addressing that on a second amendment basis and so we're likely getting a determination in that case as well which will have huge trickle down effects on later cases and so we will see how the supreme court feels on the second amendment issue when they deal with corlette and maybe even as this kind of works its way if we get a negative determination against our second amendment rights if this gets a writ of certiorari up to the supreme court we will see if the supreme court takes it 
And then hopefully if they do take it, they will rule in favor of our Second Amendment rights. So right now there's a ton going on in regards to California's various infringements on our Second Amendment rights. Like I said, their recent Miller decision has kind of hit and we're waiting to see whether or not the Ninth Circuit is going to grant that stay. That should be coming. We should be getting some more information here within the next week. And then we also have this Duncan decision. So as we get more information, I will definitely let you guys know. Now, one thing I want to let you guys know real quick that I'm sure a lot of you guys are aware of is that the ATF has opened up the pistol brace uh, commenting period for their new rule on pistol braces. So if you haven't commented on that yet, I'm going to put a link down the details section. Please go drop your comment. Let the ATF know you do not agree with this ridiculous point system worksheet that they're proposing uh, to pretty much just get rid of people using pistol braces on AR pistols, AK pistols, things like that. Their whole goal is to treat all these items as SBRs and that's reflected in this kind of worksheet that they're putting forward because there's no way that any type of AR pistol, AR AK pistol that has a pistol brace on it could possibly pass this ridiculous worksheet that they have. So if you guys have any questions, go ahead and comment down below and I'll try to answer the best of my ability. Also, if you guys like this video and like support the channel, one of the best ways to do that is to like, comment, subscribe, and make sure that notification bell because that helps the channel analytics, helps us spread the word about the Second Amendment, also spread the word about two-way news like this that is going on in the state of California and nationwide. So as always, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And never forget, this nation was built by armed scholars and this nation will be maintained by armed scholars.